Hola, buenos días. My name is Andreas Klostermann, and this talk is called Brainwaves for Hackers. Um, it's about uh, using our Python tools to understand our brain a little closer. Uh, it's also in the sense of hackers as people who build stuff and not as hackers who try to hack your brain or something. Um, well, please don't take anything of this as medical advice. Or, and this is uh, just mainly a hobby project for me. It's no academic endeavor or something. Uh, I've given uh, two talks previously um, like this. Um, if you have seen them, um, you probably don't. If you have seen them, I'll still show you something new. But if you haven't, uh, you probably uh, can follow quite nicely without it. First of all, what are brainwaves? Uh, brainwaves um, are created by your brain cells. Uh, you probably know your brain is composed of uh, billions of brain cells, and these communicate with each other via electrical signals. And these signals sort of travel outwards um, through your skull and through your, um, through your uh, skin. And if you have a sensitive sensor, you can measure um, the waves that, uh, at these locations. Um, as this also already implies, these signals are very weak and they are very noisy. And you can only um, measure the summation of billions of uh, cells at once, so you can't listen in on a, a specific brain cell or specific group of brain cells, and that makes the signal analysis very, very challenging, and it limits what we, can, what, what we can get in terms of information. So what can we do with brainwave uh, technology at all, especially as uh, hobbyists? Uh, we can do neurofeedback training, and I think that is a very uh, big and very good um, area for devices, uh, for consumer-grade devices. It is about uh, training your brain to attain certain mental states. The way it works is that we use brainwave data to assess, for example, how concentrated a user is. And then on the screen or via headphones, you give him a feedback about this mental state and he tries to increase it. And by trying to increase it, it he learns how to consciously uh, control this brain state. And this kind of training has been proven quite uh, successful in, for example, ADHD and um, epilepsy. Uh, but if you need, um, if, if you want to use uh, new feedback in a medical indication, please uh, consult a doctor. Now, the second thing you can do are simple neurologic experiments. Um, I've done some correlation things and tried to figure out how especially the muse brain uh, band works, but um, there is uh, another thing that I got to work with the newest guy, which is uh, auditory evoked response potential, but since I didn't get it to work here um, without some serious uh, yuck shaving, uh, I tried to, uh, I didn't uh, bring it today and I won't even explain what it is. Uh, then there is this area of brain computer interfaces, um, these uh, BCI uh, types of applications. They're, they are a bit like the new feedback thing, but uh, there the goal is actually to control the computer or to control a robot or something just with your brain, but uh, it's very difficult and it's not really my main interest because um, it, it doesn't really work very reliably. You have to find a way to have some kind of button, for example, a button that you can press when you want to press it and not press it when you don't want to press it, and that's kind of hard, especially with the devices I have. Um, some uh, researchers had more uh, success with uh, implanting electrodes uh, 
under the skull, not necessarily for this reason, but rather for epilepsy. And then they did PCI experiments and it worked very nicely. Uh, but please don't do that at home. Uh, theoretically, you could use uh, EEG devices like this for uh, diagnostic purposes, but um, I would not believe that it is legal to do this with these devices, and uh, probably they aren't really sweet, uh, suited for this. Now the device I uh, presented in my last few talks um, was a NeuroSky MindFave headset. It's a Bluetooth-connected device, and it has one sensor in the front. Um, I have this device. I have this device here, and um, it has a sensor, and you can wear it like this. And uh, it has a reference electrode and one channel. Uh, inside this headset is a technology called. Um, an ASIC, an application-specific integrated circuit, and uh, this can be used in other devices too. For example, there are board games where you can control a ball moving up and down uh, through your uh, brain waves, and there's also a headset that has uh, cat ears mounted on servos, and then they, these uh, ears move according to how, uh, how relaxed or concentrated you are. Well, and there's also another headset um, which is a bit more expensive, and uh, but uh, it's more comfortable to wear. But it uses the same, uh, always the same protocol and the same, um, the same, well, uh, characteristics. The second device is uh, the Interaxon Muse. The Interaxon Muse is. Uh, a bit more expensive, about 300 euros, and uh, it has four channels. Um, it has a very good app uh, for Android and iOS, also connected through Bluetooth, and it teaches you to, and the app teaches you to meditate and gives you feedback how calm you are and how you progress over time. And it uses lots of uh, gamif gamification, and I think this app is really uh, very well designed. Um, overall, I'd say the Muse is also a lot more comfortable. So it's just this headband, and it's a bit flexible, so you can adjust it to your um, to your head. In the direct comparison, the Muse has four channels, and the Mindwave has one. Uh, Mindwave has one channel. So uh, in theory, the um, Muse will give you better quality data. The Muse also has an accelerometer channel, two accelerometer channels, so this measures how the head is moving, and that's quite useful because if you know that the head is moving, you can already say uh, the brain waves are probably not uh, very useful, but you will probably have artifacts in there. There is, um, they have different sample rates, so the MindWave um, uses 512 uh, samples per second um, because of bit reasons, so it's two times 256. And the Muse, well, the Muse has, um, has a little trouble with, uh, with the P sets, so you can't really, um, you can't, change the options directly, but you have to set certain presets, and then there are consumer presets and research presets. And the what the documentation didn't say is that the firmware that was distributed with the Android um, app is, um, does, not give you, um, does not give you the research presets, and then you only have 200 hertz. Also, the protocol is somehow uh, a bit compressed, so they have a bit variable bit length scheme to encode their packets in the consumer things. And um, well, then I, this year they switched to a newer firmware in the Android uh, app, and then I got the research presets to work, and that did work nicely. But the newer versions of this headset, so I have the 2014 one and probably the 2016 one, uh, doesn't do research. Uh, it only has these 200 hertz. So, 
very important is that both um, these devices have dry sensors, so you don't need any to put any gel or fluid on there to make it work like uh, the medical devices. The MindWave also has pre-computed measures, I'd say. So there's a value from zero to 100 for attention and for meditation, what they are calling it. And this is already uh, completely uh, analyzed from the brainwave data. And uh, the only thing you have to do is to react to, uh, to, react to this uh, one byte. And this means that, for example, an Arduino can, uh, an Arduino or a bit, uh, micro bit would be able to pass this, uh, this protocol and uh, do something useful with it. With the Muse, that's not possible because it only um, gives you raw data and you have to process this raw data and that takes more processing power. But on the other hand, uh, the Muse uh, data is less processed, so you can have more control over how to, um, how to actually process it. So that's why I say the hackability of the MindWave is excellent, and uh, from the Muse, it's, it's only good. Uh, the Muse still has documentation. I found it a bit confusing or even wrong but um, it still has this documentation. It's accessible over Bluetooth, and, um, but the MindWave really is a bit easier to work with, and um, the data you get from it, also the raw data, is uh, easier to process. But uh, these devices are also very different in price, so the MindWave costs about 130 euros, the Muse costs about 300 euros. Last time I checked, a bit more, I think. So the third kind of device, which I don't own, however, is uh, the OpenBCI. They have two versions, one for $100 and one for uh, $400 or 500 I don't remember uh, quite correctly. But uh, anyway, um, the, the one has four channels, the other has uh, eight channels, and um, which is more than the Muse even. And well, um, the advantage of this OpenBCI technology is that it is extremely flexible. So you can even uh, program the firmware yourself if you want, um, and you can even reprogram the amplifiers, so you can even uh, measure heart uh, signals or other electrical heart signals or electrical muscle signals. The big disadvantage of this uh, device is that it's very do-it-yourself. Um, it doesn't even have an enclosure and uh, you have to attach your own electrodes, and these electrodes have probably have to be wet. And uh, in all in all, it takes a lot more effort to get this set up. But anyway, it uh, probably produces very good data and probably is very useful for custom um, mods. And it's, as, this, as the name OpenBCI implies, it's probably mainly geared towards, um, towards Brain control, uh, brain controlled interfaces, uh, brain computer interfaces. Now, uh, what I've done with this stuff is um, I've built a little library called Physiology, and it's geared towards real time analysis of um, physiological time series. And um, physiological time series are different stuff like, can be different stuff like uh, brain waves, for example, but also ECG. So heart uh, waves, if you want to call it that, or even muscle movements, or even uh, breathing rates, or anything else you can think of. And they are transmitted at uh, different uh, frequencies, of course. And I'm using the PANDAS time series fact functionality to make this uh, a little less painless. Um, first, of all, it currently supports MindWave and Muse. I'm also working on a Bitalino driver, but that doesn't really work that well. If you know what a Bitalino is, but it's also something for ECG and stuff. Um, it supports especially uh, multiple and irregular time C, so you don't really know when the data is coming, and maybe it has a varying rate or whatever, and Pandas really supports this really well. Another main feature is integration into the Jupyter Notebook, and I try to 
makes this um, relatively painless. Now I can try to show you how this works. I have to adjust the headband to my head. Now it's uh, streaming, but it's not quite right yet. So this device is a bit more finicky. That looks a bit noisier than it should, but in any case, the problem with uh, uh, this kind of uh, brainwave is uh, with this kind of electrophysiological uh, measurements is that um, virtually anything in your face or in your head um, will have a higher or louder signal than your brain. And for example, I can move my eyes. Um, I can clench my teeth. And this time, um, the, the, so I, I'm displaying here, here two uh, channels. And the blue one is the left one, and the right one, uh, the, the, the red one is the um, right one. And I can just try to move my left face. Yeah. Uh, well, it doesn't really work. Currently. So. so now I can move my left face and my right face. And as you can see, the uh, strength of the signal is slightly different because it's a different distance. But, well. So the ar architecture of how this works is that there is an async IO server. Um, that is a different process, and I did that to isolate the, all this Bluetooth handling stuff from the uh, notebook and it uh, communicates with a Bluetooth headset. To get the data, and then it can send it onwards to the IPython kernel. So inside the IPython kernel, I have some, I have some um, code that manages an experiment. It can record the data, and it can then update, for example, a vocal time series or something. So in the note, inside the notebook, there's also so, on the browser side, there's also some software. Currently, I'm not using any custom JavaScript. I, earlier, I had to, but uh, Bokeh now has this push notebook, and that um, also works very nicely. But it's uh, important to know that the browser is sort of a different network endpoint than the actual server or the kernel, and these are different moving parts. So um, what physiology is mainly about is uh, doing experiments. And experiments, well, can be anything, uh, mostly some recordings, and or maybe you do some feedback or some sound experiments or whatever. Um, I have an experiment class, so th these are declared like this. And in this case, I would be declaring two devices, the Muse and the Mindwave, to have these different MAC addresses. And then uh, the server is contacted and tries to reach these devices and stream their data. This is a more practical example with only one device. Um, 
in the second cell there is um, um, first of all an HTML widget from the IPy widgets library and this is later updated to contain some information and I instanti instantiate the experiment class with a file name where all the data is stored. Now the experiment class instance is used as a decorator on a handler function and this handler function is called every time some new data arrives. Um, then it checks if this um, if the experiment already has data on the AF7 time, time series, which is one of the uh, channels. And then there's this uh, display value thing, which updates the HTML dynamically. In this case, just with, um, with the, how long uh, the time series currently is. So that is the problem, it jumped to 30 seconds because it has had data in the queue and that's not, I still have some problems with uh, timing and synchronization and stuff. Um, it could be a bit smoother, but well, it works quite nicely. So with relatively simple um, means I can already have uh, some kind of feedback. Well, synchronization. These experiment classes contain um, time series, as I said, and for example, in this case, from the Muse, uh, the AF7, and this shows the first few samples. Every sample has a time. Um, as a timestamp, this timestamp isn't really the real timestamp, but rather I try to figure out inside the server um, at which point this was measured uh, by some simple heuristics. Unfortunately, neither the Muse nor the MindWave contain any logic to um, tell you when they sample something. Now to analyze it, um, we need to, often we need to window this data. So. Um, it's a particular sample of a brainwave is uh, relatively useless. What is uh, more useful is, for example, different frequencies that you are seeing or different signal strengths and over a certain time period. So, for example, um, you would window the data like uh, with, with a window width of uh, three seconds and a, a step size of one second. That means that the first window is at zero seconds to three seconds, then one to four, two to f uh, five, and so on. And this is turned into an iterator, and then we can do more processing on it. So the analysis class then um, can, so I, here on the button, I pass this um, processing function over the windows and then into a data frame and this processing function uh, generates several features for every window. Especially uh, important is the standard deviation because this is a nice way to find if there is um, noise in the system or any artifact or, or bigger artifacts. Um, on the bottom here I try to, or I do, uh, calculate some um, frequency measurements, not really important to understand it right now, but um, there are several frequency bands, so when you have alpha waves, you should be more uh, relaxed, and beta waves mean more concentration, and that's, so that's important to know. Um, of course, this data frame now is just a standard pandas data frame with uh, columns, and we now that we have this data frame information, we can actually uh, we can actually do normal um, data science stuff, for example, correlations. Now, um, as I said, the Muse has four channels, and two of these are on the front of the uh, of the head, and um, 
these are AF7 and AF8, and I'm plotting the, these here together. Um, the first, the alpha strengths on the left. The alpha strengths um, correlates very nicely, just as a beta one strength, um, and this also means that um, even if you have more channels than one, uh, it's still relatively similar information, but you can also imagine that having two channels who measure more or less the same thing um, is more reliable or more precise. Now the second thing I tried is uh, to correlate Muse and MindWave. So I did what I showed earlier. I put two devices into an experiment and recorded it. I had to wear these devices uh, at the same time, which I won't do now because it looks silly. Uh, but it doesn't really work as well. Um, it could mean that I did some, other I didn't uh, put much work in it and um, the signal could be horrible. That could be a reason why this is not such a good correlation. It could also mean that they have very different latencies, but well. So uh, that's basically um, everything I have to tell today. Um, I'm trying to do more experiments, but most of the work I have done so far is in integrating these devices and trying to make them work. And um, well, so I haven't really progressed into uh, doing much experimentation. But anyway, um, the code is also on GitHub. Um, I'll have to publish it later because I have to clean something up. And uh, the, the slides will also be on GitHub. Um, this whole uh, notebook presentation and some supporting code um, will be there, and I will treat it later. Now, um, that I'd like to talk about some other stuff I've been up to. Um, I've been working on Porkit Python, which is a library I created to deal with Oxford Nanopore data, which is a sequence, uh, a DNA sequencer. So, so the Oxford Nanopore minion is a, a DNA sequencer, which is um, about the size of a computer mouse, and it can sequence DNA. And it has a particular data format, and I try to work with that and maybe next year I'll present uh, genome sequencing for hackers. Um, I'm also working on a workshop called Presenting with Jupyter, uh, which contains several, um, several um, tricks that I'm also using here. So you probably noticed that I don't have the um, help thing and the X thing and uh, various other ugly artifacts, and I changed the transition styles and adjusted the size a bit. Um, that's all nice to know, and it's not so common knowledge. Uh, a lot of presenters had uh, problems here with uh, the screen resolutions. Anyway, uh, I also did something called Jupyter Flight Gear, which is a silly afternoon hack. So I, trans I, I uh, used Flight Gear. Flight Gear is a um, flight simulation software open source. And um, I managed to stream data from the Flight Gear uh, directly into the uh, Jupyter notebook and have some graphics or something. In theory, you could do your own autopilot, but I just want to mention it here because I have to, it's sort of cool, but I have to abandon it for because of time. Now I'd like to thank you for your attention. My Twitter handle is Bayesian Horse. Um, I have a GitHub account with uh, Pyseology, especially it doesn't have the news uh, code yet, but it will today. Um, another project I've been working on is Table Cleaner, which can do, um, which, clean, which cleans up data frame um, type like data to, um, and turns the errors into data itself. And well, the notebook assets stuff is old. It's, I should have deleted it. <laughs> so we now have time for questions and I'd like to start with that. Anyone questions? We should have a microphone, but we don't even have a chair, so.
Yes, it, I mean, it depends if there's documents. Uh, sorry, uh, let's repeat the question. He's talking about uh, head, uh, headphones. Um, which name? Which one were they called? Cocoon from, uh, they have an, from, from Kickstarter, they have EEG sensor somehow, and uh, maybe it's an interesting device to add to that. Yes, I'll try. Or I'll see if, if you want to do a pull request or if you need help, I can uh, certainly help you. Can you please repeat this visibility? You mean the data quality? Yeah. Ah, so the question was uh, which has a better data quality? And I'd say the Muse clearly has more data and you probably can get more information out of it. It depends <laughs> for the kind of application you want. Uh, I mean, the MindWave, uh, the new Sky stuff does uh, very much uh, signal processing already inside the device that can have advantages and disadvantages. I'd say the Muse produces certainly more data and probably more information, especially uh, of uh, different parts of the brain. Please be louder. Hardly. Um, you can uh, tell something about the mental state, but even that isn't very useful without knowing. So, so without no, I have to repeat the question. The question was, uh, um, if the. If, uh, with the rec if you have the recording, can you tell what the b uh, person was doing? Hmm? No. So um, the question was, uh, can, you do, uh, can you tell what uh, someone is doing just from the brainwave data? No, you can't really because it very much depends on, um, on the person and it's very vague information and you can maybe tell if he, if he is very concentrated or very relaxed, but um, even that depends on how his brain waves uh, usually are distributed and there are interpersonal uh, differences, some and Yes, uh, it's possible to recognize feelings um, if you set up the experiments right. I, I guess you could do that. Uh, the question is, um, was um, that I only showed uh, two channels and you asked about... Yes, um, the, if I can uh, analyze different kind of uh, wave bands inside uh, the brain waves. So um, the, the data analysis works like you can do a Fourier transform analysis and then you can detect the strengths at different frequencies and of course you can, um, can calculate that. In my example, I only calculated alpha and beta one and I could, of course, um, calculate everything else. And it should be more precise with the news and with the mind wave. But. Okay, if there's no further questions, then uh, I'd like to thank you again and have a nice day.